talk about how to slice three-dimensional figures into two-dimensional shapes. Uh, shapes, for instance, like this uh, cone, uh, cylinders, rectangular prisms, spheres. Sometimes you need to think of them in terms of the two-dimensional shapes that comprise them. Uh, it's going to make visualizing the solution much easier. So let's take a look at number 17. Uh, 17 says the right circular cone above is a radius r and height h. Uh, of the following expressions, which represents the volume of the smallest rectangular box that completely contains the cone, right? So we need to draw a box around this cone. Uh, so we can sort of picture it as something like this, right? Sort of, there's the top of the box, right? And then it comes down and then it contains this, right? And you can see already that this is not the most straightforward way of thinking about this. Again, because we're dealing with a two-dimensional shape, right? Uh, you know, two-dimensional uh, surface, the paper, uh, and we have three-dimensional shapes. Uh, so when we start to do this, we can recognize that, well, a uh, cone here is really just a circular base, right? And then you could think of the top of the cone as sort of extensions of this right triangle that we see here that is just in all these different directions. So we also have a right triangle here, right? Uh, and they also tell us that, um, let's see, the, the box has to contain the, um, the cone, right? So the base has to be big enough to accommodate this circle, right? The circle that makes up the base of the cone. So if we drew that, again, if we turn it into a two-dimensional shape, we start to see the relationship between the different shapes. So in this case, we draw the square exactly around the circle because it says it's the smallest rectangular box, so we don't want any gaps in between the two shapes. We see how the two shapes are related to each other, right? We see that the circle uh, and the square share an important dimension. Specifically, the circle's diameter is also, label that D, is also the square's side, label that S, right? So that tells us that D, which is also 2R, is going to equal the side of the, um, uh, the side of the rectangular prism, right? In this case, um, the base of it is going to be S times S, right? So that's good news because the question is asking for the volume of the rectangular box, and we already know two of the um, sides, right? Uh, we know that the base uh, and the uh, width of the rectangular box, that uh, the bottom, the square, is uh, 2R, right? D. So we have 2R times 2R. And where did I get that from? Well, I know that volume is length times width times height, right? And again, length and width are... 2r and 2r, right? So we know the volume of this is 2r times 2r. And then uh, by what's the last dimension? Well, it's the height of the rectangle, right? Because if we, again, if we have that rectangle, um, I'm sorry, the height of the triangle, because we have the rectangle, the height of this um, triangle is also going to be the height of the box, right? Do we see that? So it's 2r times 2r times h, right? And then we could just simplify. And we're done. Okay, so that's why it's really important to think about three-dimensional shapes uh, in terms of the two-dimensional um, sort of the two-dimensional geometric shapes that make them up. All right, let's try one more. Okay, this one is a number 18. It's also difficult. So the figure above is a pyramid. The base is square with side x. The other four faces are equilateral triangles in terms of x, what is the surface area of the pyramid, right? So we don't have a formula for surface area of the pyramid, right? Um, so we should probably think about how we're going to visualize that first. Well, clearly it's going to be the area of the base, right? So we'll say area sub b. Uh, and then we have these four lateral sides, right? And it says it's a square, right? So we know these are all the same. Um, um, so we can find the area of that is just going to be x squared, right? x is this side. So that's good. Uh, and then it says the other four equilateral triangles. And we know they're the same equilateral triangle because they all have the same one side, right? This is x, this is x, this is x, this is x, it's all x, right? So um, to find the total surface area, we're going to need to find for uh, the area of one of the sides, right? Good. And again, uh, it's three dimensions hard to visualize, so let's turn into two dimensions. Specifically, we're going to look at one of the equilateral triangles here. So this is one of the sides, again, flat. It's much easier to think about. And you know that it's x and x and x. We know it's e uh, x, x, and x because it says they're equilateral triangles. Equilateral means three equal sides. So we know that one side, we know them all, right? 
Okay, so we just need to find the area of these triangles. We know that area of a triangle is one half base times height, right? Um, now we have the base, right? We know that the base is x, so we can start to substitute. So we know that um, one of these is one half x. Now we need to find the height, right? Well, let's draw the height because we don't have, or the height has to be perpendicular to the base, right? Okay, uh, and what else can we do here? Well, this is a really good trick on the SAT, but an equilateral triangle is a perfect hiding spot for two 30, 60, 90 triangles, right? And if we remember, 30, 60, 90 triangle looks like that, right? And the reason we like 30, 60, 90 triangles is, is uh, that they have very consistent relationships among the sides, right? So this is 30 degrees, this is 60 degrees. Uh, and we know that if we take a look at this, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle right here, right? So it's they're just moving it down here so you can see. It. All right, so we know that the relationship of sides in a 30, 60, 90 triangle is S, uh, 2S, S root 3, right? Which is cool because we have the short side, right? We know that the short side is X over 2, right? So if we need to go, we have the short side and we need to find the longer leg, we just multiply it by the square root of 3, right? So we know that the height of this, we know that the height of this triangle is now x over 2 times the square root of 3, right? That's the entire height. Remember, it's this short leg times square root of 3 to get the uh, length of the long leg. Okay, cool. So we have the height. Good. Now let's simplify. Uh, so we know that the area of the triangle, we label that as area of the side, so I'll go back to that labeling up here, uh, equals one-fourth x squared times the square root of three, right? Um, cool. And that is, uh, that's very close to the correct answer. We could simplify that just a bit more. Let's do uh, x squared root three over four. Let's, that's good. Okay, and we know we have four of those, right? So it's x squared plus four times x squared root three over four. These fours cancel out. We're left with x squared plus x squared root three. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, piece of cake, right?